am going to go through a wall series um, exercise, um, a couple of exercises, and all you really need is your body and a wall. I like to use doors. Um, they often provide a very good free space to stack your spine against. But just stand with your back facing the door or the wall, and you'll settle your tush against the wall and your spine as well. And you don't have to force your head backwards into the wall. I want you to just find a natural line from the top of your head to the ceiling. Many of us have a forward head posture of sorts, and so it won't actually help us to cram our head back. Um, it won't even put our head right where it should be necessarily on top of our spine. So just think of that length of the ears away from the shoulders with your tush, your ribs, and your shoulders um, stacked against the wall. Now, your feet are about a foot's distance away from the wall. So your heels are not up against the wall, they're actually in front of you. Feet are parallel, hip width apart, and your knees are bent. The knees are bent still over the ankle, so not beyond the ankle over the toes, but try to see if you can get your knee to track in alignment with that second and third toe. Now from here, just dangle your arms by your sides and take a few breaths. Inhale into the back and sides of your ribs, expanding in three dimensions. As you exhale, try to broaden your bottom rib to the wall behind you. And again, inhale, breathe into the back. And exhale, broaden your bottom rib to the wall behind you and feel your waist gently cinching, cinching together. Do that a couple more times. Be aware that when you connect the bottom rib to the wall behind you, two things might happen. You may end up uh, tucking the pelvis slightly, and you also might end up having the shoulders slump forwards a little bit or feel like they're rounding. That's okay. Just try to find that bottom rib broad and that upper ab connection. And once you have that, see if you can just widen the collarbones sideways without actually cramming them back. With the pelvis, if it happens to tuck a little bit, that's okay as well, as long as you're not purposefully squeezing your butt and tucking to get the ribs to the wall. Let your tailbone dangle and try to get your bottom rib broad on the wall. And if the pelvis happens to do a little curl, that's okay. Now, from here, bring your arms in front of you and make sure that your shoulders are plugged into the socket. So, don't reach forwards, or you maybe can start by reaching forwards, but then bring the shoulder blades down and back, plugging the arms into the socket. Connect your bottom rib to the wall, and then start to raise your arms above your head. Only go so far above your head where you can maintain that bottom rib connection to the wall. And then bring the hands down, and you can lower to your hips. So this is basically your rib cage arms, but you're standing, shoulders are down, ribs are broad behind you. Funnel the ribs to the pubic bone, and then slice the air to come back down. Now this can be done, um, you can actually hold weights in your hands, I'd say one to three pounds, and it will definitely increase the challenge and make it much more of an arm workout, but I wanna make sure you can have that connection of the upper arm bone into the shoulder blade and then around into the ribs first, before you add the weights. Now, from there you can go into some circles up out to the sides and down. Make sure the circles stay in front of your body so you never open so wide where they go in alignment with your shoulders. A great cue is make sure you can see the fingertips out of the corners of your eyes. Also make sure that the shoulders stay down and the ribs stay broad behind you as you go up and open to the side. Do five to eight in that direction and then you can actually reverse Sometimes it helps to have the palms face up, especially on the reverse. Yep, and they can be small, they can be big, wherever you feel that shoulder blade to rib cage connection with the ribs broad behind you. Then from here, you can actually also do some scissors. So one arm can go up and the other one goes down, and then you'll switch. You can have them be a little bit away, almost like on a diagonal, or closer to uh, the straight line of your side body. Either one's fine. You'll notice that the if you go on the diagonal, this is the X, X exercise or the one arm one up, one arm up that we do when we lie on our back with weights, right? Same thing. It's a little more forgiving 
than slicing right close to your body. This is much harder to keep that bottom rib broad. After you finish that, the last thing we'll do is a roll down. So you bring your chin to your chest, nose to your navel, and you round down. Knees are bent slightly and hang the hands until they're about a foot off the floor. From here, scoop your belly, pubic bone to belly button, and start to stack your spine, one bone at a time, up against the wall. And again, chin to chest, nose to navel. Truly try to keep your spine on the wall as long as possible before peeling the vertebra off. Breathe in at the bottom, and then exhale, tuck your tail, scoop the belly, Use those abdominals to literally zip throughout the front of your spine and then all the way through the top of your head. One more time to make three, rounding forwards. Now when you're forwards, I want you to scoop deeply through your abdominals. Hang your head so it's like a bowling ball on a toothpick. Arms are dangling as well and I want you to feel like there's a lasso around your waist pulling up to the ceiling and you are actively rounding up and over the lasso. Make fists with your hands and make lazy circles out and around with your fists. Reverse the circles. Now dangle your fingertips, breathe into your back, and then exhale, zip up pubic bone to the belly button, stacking your vertebra one at a time up your wall. Take one foot back, and then the other to bring your feet under your hips and then stand up on your own weight and just feel that nice length from the top of your head to your tailbone. 